In this video, I'm going to be going over reaction mechanisms for general chemistry. If you have stumbled upon this video as an organic chemistry student, this is not the type of reaction mechanism that you're looking for. This is reaction mechanisms as they apply to introductory kinetics. Most chemical reactions don't actually take place according to their balanced equation. So for example, this balanced equation that I'm writing, two molecules of NO reacting with one molecule of O2 to produce two molecules of NO2. In this reaction, we don't have two molecules of NO and one molecule of O2 all reacting together all at once to make this, this particular product. This reaction actually takes place in two steps. The two steps are referred to as elementary steps. For this particular reaction, the first step that takes place is two NO molecules reacting with each other to produce N2O2. And you might be thinking, what the heck? N2O2 is not even a part of this overall reaction. That's really common with these elementary steps. Once the N2O2 has been formed, the N2O2 reacts with the O2 molecule and it produces the actual products of the reaction to NO2. So again, the balanced overall equation that we write usually isn't a description of exactly how the reaction proceeds. Typically, the reaction proceeds through a series of elementary steps or individual steps in the reaction. The elementary steps together are referred to as the reaction mechanism, an explanation of how the reaction actually takes place. If we add up the elementary steps with each other, they're going to add up to the overall chemical reaction. Let's talk a little bit about this N2O2 thing that is formed in step one. N2O2 is what we refer to as an intermediate. An intermediate is a molecule that is formed in the elementary steps, and it's also consumed in the elementary steps. Intermediates are not reactants or products of the overall reaction. Not reactant or product of the overall reaction. The overall reaction which would be not the elementary steps. This is the overall reaction right here. So N2O2 is not a reactant or a product of the overall reaction. It only shows up when we look at the elementary steps or the mechanism. It is formed and consumed during the chemical reaction. So we never detect it. In this particular reaction, the um, intermediate is formed during elementary step one, and then it's immediately consumed in elementary step two. For all mechanisms, one of the elementary steps is significantly slower than all of the others. And this elementary step that is slow is referred to as the rate determining or the rate limiting step. Rate determining or rate limiting, the terms are used interchangeably. Rate determining or the rate limiting step is going to be defined as the slowest elementary step. In this we're talking, when I say slow, I'm talking about the, the rate of the reaction, the one that has the slowest rate, the slowest elementary step. The slowest elementary step is kind of the bottleneck for the overall reaction. So the rate determining step, the slowest elementary step, is the one that determines the overall rate of the reaction of the whole entire reaction the overall rate of the whole entire reaction, and it also determines the rate law for the entire reaction. So to summarize that, again, of the elementary steps, one of them is going to be significantly slower than the other. Maybe it's step one in this case. If it was step one, there would be some kind of notation at the end of it saying that this was the slow step. 
meaning that this step took a long time, but once the slow step was over, elementary step number two just happened really quickly. If this was the slow step of this reaction, this slow step would be the step that controlled and dictated the overall rate of the overall whole entire reaction. And this step would also be the step that dictated the rate law for the reaction.